Hey everyone, it's Mr. Canfield. Last time I tried to film this video, I started feeling sick a couple minutes in and went home for the day. So we're gonna give this a shot. <laughs> I'm using a book that's not mine, so I'm gonna be writing on paper today because uh, I got partway through the other video, but I'm restarting. So we're doing a topic called related rates today. The big deal with related rates is that we are going to be dealing with, in, uh, well, sorry, with derivatives over time. Um, this whole year, like if we've been dealing with like y is equal to 5x plus 3, we've been taking what we would call dy dx and we would get 5. Um, or if we had something more interesting like a 5x plus 3x squared, then we get 5 plus 6x. So that's because the variable that was our independent variable was x. Now we're going to be taking derivatives with respect to time. And so if I was going to take y is equal to 5x plus 3x squared. If I was going to be taking the derivative of this with respect to time, instead of writing dy dx over here, I would call this dy dt. And this would no longer just be a 5. Because remember, up in this example, this was actually a 5 dx dx. But the dx dx canceled itself out. And then this 6x had a dx dx that popped out, and that canceled. But now, when I take the derivative of 5x, I get 5, and instead of getting a dx dx that pops out and disappears, now I get a 5 dx dt that pops out. And here, when I get the, the 6, sorry, 6x, I get a dx dt that pops out. And this is because our variables are all going to be slaves to time. In the past, all of our variables have been a slave to x. Whatever x does, everything else is affected. Now, whatever time does, everything else is affected. So that is one of the big shifts in our thinking that's going to happen. And this is because we're getting into application problems. Um, so some real world places, uh, or real-ish world places that we can see calculus. So. This says, write equations that describe these statements. Be sure to label units. So A says, John is five feet tall and is growing at three inches per year. So we could say, if we want, for John, we could say H is equal to five. And if we wanted to describe his height in an equation, we could say the change in height over time, or dh dt, is equal to three. And it says to use units, we could write inches per year if you want, this is inches, whatever. Um, usually at the end of a problem, we'll throw units on there. Um, then B here, it says a storm is 750 miles from shore. Probably means to say 750 miles from shore and approaching at 200 miles per day. So we could, again, we could say distance is equal to 750. Now distance is actually a really bad letter to use because then I have to write DD dt. The change in distance. Now, if I said the change in distance was 200, this is not true. Because this would mean the next day we'd be at 950 and the day after that 1150. But it says it's getting closer, approaching. So we'd want to say dd dt is negative 200. So again, I discourage dd dt because it's silly looking. Um, I'll still use it, but do as I say, not as I do. All right, let's see. Part C, it says, the radius of a puddle of water is four feet and is not changing. So you might think, wait, there's only one equation there. And that is R is equal to four, but there's actually another one. The change in the radius is not, it's not changing. There's a number for that. Zero. Let's see what our next one says. The volume of a cone, well, volume, I can say volume is 12 pi. And shrinking, ooh, it's shrinking. So if it's shrinking, I could say dv dt. And shrinking, that means it's getting smaller, so I would use negative five pi. I didn't read those numbers, sorry. Um, so I'm gonna pause really quick and see if I need to go over any more of these. Um, okay, I, I looked at the rest of them. I don't really see value in spending time talking about those. I do want to address something I said in part A, though. John is five feet tall. I wrote five inches. Um, if I wanted to say that in feet, or 
I could say five feet tall and then three inches per year. And usually they're going to give us the same unit. Um, but yeah, these are all just trying to, to get us into that frame of mind of we can talk about change as D something DT, and then we can talk about what something actually is as a regular letter. So um, now we're going to do some more complex examples of this. So it says a rectangle whose sides are changing, okay, interesting, is 10 inches by 6 inches. So at one point in time, it's a 10 by 6 rectangle. Remember that rectangles have a right angle here, and it has two sets of congruent sides, which I normally just say congruent, but congruent if we're trying to spell it. Write formulas for both the perimeter and area and how fast each is changing in terms of L and W at that specific moment in time. So I'm going to call this my L. I normally call this way my L and I call this way my W. Um, the thing is, 10 and 6 we're eventually going to be able to use as substitutes for L and W, but before we do any calculus I can't substitute them in because they're changing. So here's what I mean. We can say the, um, we'll start with perimeter because that's going to be easier. So perimeter, the perimeter currently is 10 plus 10 plus 6 plus 6, right? So that's 10, 20, 26, 32. The perimeter is currently 32, but it said that the perimeter, or sorry, it, it said the side lengths are changing. So it's 32 right now. It's not going to be 32 a second from now. So I don't want to just say P is 32. That's not true. Um, long term, that's not true. That's only true right now. Instead, what I need to say is the perimeter is equal to L plus L plus W plus W, otherwise stated 2L plus 2W. So if I wanted to know how the perimeter was changing, I would look at how the perimeter changes over time. So when I take that derivative, I would get dp dt is equal to, now careful, we're taking the derivative with respect to time. So this is going to turn into a 2, and normally it would just be 2, it would be done. But since it's with respect to t, it's going to be dl dt. And remember, I use the uh, cursive l just to make sure it doesn't look like a 1. Um, and similarly, the, the 2w is going to, when we take the derivative, is going to turn to 2dw dt. So, I don't know what any of these are, but if I knew what numbers they were, then, then great. It doesn't matter what L and W currently are. All that matters is that the, the change in perimeter is going to be affected by the change in time. So, now let's look at area. When we know area, of a rectangle is equal to length times width. So if I was going to take the derivative of this, we'd call that dA dt, your temptation might be to write this as dL dt dW dt, like just the derivatives times each other. But remember, that's not how derivatives work. The only way to take a derivative of two things multiplied together is to take the derivative of one of them. So I'll take the derivative of L and get dL dt leave the other one alone, plus I'll leave this one alone and take the derivative of the other one, also known as product rule. There are those four spots. And now that we're here, in this particular instant, if we wanted to find the instantaneous rate of change of area, we could plug in the 10 for L and the 6 for W. We still don't know the DL DT and the DW DT, but, but if we did, we'd be good. So, oh, down here, our next question. It says, its length and width are increasing at 2 inches per second. So that would mean that dl dt is equal to 2, and dw dt is also equal to 2. They're both increasing at 2 inches per second. So if I wanted to find the change in area, then I could go and say, well, I know dl dt is 2, and then my w at this point in time is 6, and my l is 
at this point in time is 10. So we could say 10 and then dw dt was 2. And so 12 plus 20, 32. We could say dA dt is equal to 32. And now my change in area over my change in time. So let's see, change in area. Well, what units is area going to be based on the units we have in this question? If its length is inches, then its area is going to be inches by inches or inches squared. Change in time is based on what they tell us here, which is second. So the change in area is going to be 32 inches squared per second. Or square inches is how people normally will say that. So similarly, we can use this and, and plug these numbers into our perimeter formula and find out how fast our perimeter is changing and get 2 times dl dt, which was 2, plus 2 times dw dt, which was also 2. That's 4 plus 4 is 8. And that's going to be 8, and perimeter is a is a length. So that would just be inches per second. So length is going to be, I'll, I'll write this down for you. Length would always be inches. Area, we add another dimension. It's a two-dimensional thing, so it's inches squared. Volume is the next one. That's inches cubed. And if it wasn't inches, if it was miles, it'd be miles, miles squared, miles cubed, etc. So, okay. So, I'm not going to do part B. It's the exact same concept, except uh, since it's decreasing at two inches per second, um, then that we would just plug, we would use the same formulas we had before, but plug in negatives for things. Um, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time plugging numbers into formulas. I think de developing the formulas is the hard part for this. So, um, so I'm actually going to skip all the way to number three. Um, so it says a right circular cylinder. So in case you don't know what that means, um, right means that it's uh, vertical and circular is just so that you know that it's a circle and the you know, it's a can, um, but there's no changing to the shape or anything like actual cans. It says the dimensions are changing. So the, the dimensions that a cylinder has that we want to pay attention to are the radius and the height. Those are really the only two things because since it's a circle, there's no length and width to take care of. It's just a single R. So if we want the volume of a cylinder, the volume of a cylinder is essentially whatever the area of that base is times the height. And so the area of its base is the area of a circle, which is pi R squared times the height. So the derivative of this is going to be a little interesting. Let's talk about its surface area first, because surface area is a little bit easier. I like to use SA for surface area. Um, it's a personal preference. I think most people prefer to write A instead of SA, but for some reason I like using SA to remind myself I'm thinking surface area. Okay, so let's think about this. Um, and this is, this, I'm doing this cold right now. This isn't like I have something off to the side. I want to show you the way that I think through this. So if I want to find the surface area, that means I want to find the area of all the surfaces. I know that's what that word means, but it just, it's helpful for me to say it like that. Well, I know I have a top surface and a bottom surface, and they're the same. They're both a circle. So I know that the area of one of those is pi r squared. So I could say it's 2 pi r squared. That's going to be the top and bottom circle. And then I have this wrap around the, the label side, like the, 
And so I can think about that. That is a, you know, it's this open part. You're just redrawing the same circle. I know, I know, I know, except I'm gonna draw like these little lines to show that it's empty on the inside. So if I wanted to calculate this, this is essentially a, a rectangle that's been wrapped together. So the the length of this of this like outside piece is going to be the circumference and then the the width is going to be whatever the height is of our so that's our circumference and then that's our height so i know circumference is 2 pi r and then i know that the height here is h so that would be my my area of the side piece so this would be my surface area um, the derivatives of both of these are nasty, so um, buckle up. So if I wanted to find dv dt, you know what, let me, I'm going to write this on a new piece of paper. So if we know, if we know that volume is equal to pi r squared h, then dv dt is equal to, okay. Do I take the derivative of pi? So pi is a number. It's a constant. So I, if you remember, the, the it's called the constant multiple rule. But it, the, the big idea is that if you're multiplying something by a number, you don't need to, you don't need to change anything about it when you're doing the derivative. Um, this would be like a triple product rule otherwise and be a big mess. But so anyway. We can kind of think about this like it's pi r squared times h. So the derivative of pi r squared is going to be 2 pi r. h stays alone. However, however, pause, 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 pause. I'm doing product rule here, but I just took the derivative of a letter, of r. So I need to pop out a dr dt on the end of that. Then, when I take the derivative of my second piece, I leave the pi r squared alone. And the derivative of h is going to be 1 dh dt. And we have this horrible mess of a formula. But if we kind of think about what each of these pieces is, I think it'll help us understand what's happening. So we did product rule up here. So the 2 came out, pi r was left the h stayed alone, then a drdt popped out. I could have put the drdt right here, I just wanted to write it at the end. Um, I took the derivative of v and got dv dt. Over here, we took the derivative of just the end, left the rest alone, and that's where I got pi r squared dh dt. So I'm going to go back and look at the problem and see if they give us any information about any of these pieces. So let's just do part a. So part A says the radius is growing at two feet per minute and the height is shrinking at three feet per minute. So it said the radius is growing. That's DRDT is growing at two feet per minute. So I can say DRDT is equal to two and I can say DHDT, the height is shrinking at three feet per minute. But wait, wait, we said it's shrinking. So I need to write minus. Um, also in the problem, we're given some information. At a moment in time, it's got a height of 9 and a radius of 4. So if I want to find out height of 9, radius of 4. Notice how I'm, I'm writing all these numbers down. So what we do is we, we find the formula, we take the derivative of that formula, Then we start plugging stuff in after we've taken the derivative. Because if I had plugged in 4 and 9 here, I would have gotten v is equal to just a number, and the derivative of a number is 0. And we, we lost all of our meaning then. So let's see. Equals, switch back to marker, 2 
pi. R is 4. H is 9. The RDT is 2. Plus pi. R is 4, so R squared is 16. The HDT is negative 3. Okay. You can leave it like that. I'm going to clean it up just a little bit. So I have 2 times pi times 4 times 9 times 2. So 2 times 4 is 8. Times 9 is 72. Times 2 is 144. So I'm going to write this as 144 pi. And then this one is 16 times 3. And 16 times 3 is 48. So I'm going to say negative 48 pi. And so I've got 144 pi plus negative 48 pi. I'm going to write that as, let's see, what is that, 96? I think so. Yeah. So that'll be 96 pi. I'm second guessing my arithmetic. Cool. I made, I've made sillier mistakes in my life. And now this was a change in volume, right? So volume and the problem talks about feet. So volume is feet cubed. So feet cubed per, looking at the time, they talk about minute, feet cubed per minute. So that's how we would go about finding the volume of that. Um, so let's bring back that surface area. So surface area, this is a pretty nasty, pretty nasty looking problem here. Because if I'm going to take my derivative of this and get d s a d t well, over here on the on the right hand side, two pi r squared. What's the? There's only one variable here, and it's r. So the two pi is just a number out front of the r squared. So the derivative of r squared is just two times that, right? So I could write that as two times two pi or four pi r. But then I took a derivative of a letter, so a d r d t pops out. And then two pi r h. There are two variables here. That means I have to do the product rule. So the first derivative of this will be plus two pi. I'll take the derivative of r and get the r dt. The h stays there. Then plus two pi r dh dt. The biggest hang up that people have on these is they forget to do the product rule because we're dealing with weird letters. And now I could go in and I know all these letters. It told me every single one of these letters. I can go in and I can plug stuff in, find a number. Um, you're welcome to do that. I'm skipping it because that's the easy part. And I want to keep this video as short as possible. Um, had a student, got a four on the AP, on the AB exam. Um, they told me in BC that BC was when they finally understood related rates. I'm hoping to help you understand it um, this year instead of next year. So, Stu gives us a really, really good breakdown of how to, to walk through the problems. Um, so related rates problems have a process to them. Um, and he has, I, I highly recommend reading through his process. Um, just like kind of glancing at it now, it looks really good. Um, okay. So I'm going to start doing some real related rates problems. Problem number one, even though it says four. An oil tanker leaks oil that spreads in a circular pattern whose radius increases at the rate of 50 feet per minute. How fast are the circumference and area of the spill increasing when the radius of the spill is 20 feet and 50 feet? So it's asking a whole lot of information here. So I'm going to talk you through how I would break a problem like this down and go through and solve it. 
So I'm going to switch to pencil so I can fit this all on one page. So oil tanker leaks oil that spreads in a circular pattern. So I know I'm dealing with a circle here whose radius increases. So it's kind of like, okay, it's growing, it's growing outward. Radius increases at a rate of 50 feet per minute. So I'm going to say my change in radius over time, my DRDT is equal to 50. Okay. That's really all the information it gives me. And then it says, a says, what is DA? Nope. It asks for DC DT when R is equal to 20. I'm going to just going to do this one part and then for part B, I'll, I'm going to do the other part. Um, it feels a little redundant to do this problem four times. So if I want to find the change in circumference, then I'm going to need to know what the circumference is. Well, circumference is 2 pi r. So then dc dt is equal to 2 pi dr dt. And just to address this, if you're like, why didn't we do product rule here? Because 2 pi is a number. We don't do product rule when it's just a number times it. We do product rule when it's variable times variable. Okay, so I want to know what dc dt is when r equals 20. Turns out there's no r in this formula anywhere, and that's fine. So all I have to do is drop in 50 for dr dt. Why did I write a 20 there? Sorry. 2 pi times 50. Drop in a 50 for DRDT, 2 times pi times 50, we get 100 pi and feet. Now I'm dealing with circumference, and that's just a distance, a length, so feet per minute. I could do the same thing for 50 feet, but it turns out it's not going to change it at all. It's still going to be 100 feet per minute. Now for part B, it, it asks about, no, part, part, part B, well, part B asks for, I'm demonetized now, it asks for 50 feet. But let's talk about area. It wants area for both of them. Um, but we know area is equal to pi r squared. OK. So I'm going to calculate area. The derivative of area is dA dt over here, pi times r squared. This is going to be 2 pi r and then dr dt. <laughs> I think it's interesting that the change in area is equal to the circumference ch times the change in radius. Um, it's kind of neat that that always happens. Um, okay, anyway, so we wanted to know what is dA dt when our radius is 20 or when our radius is 50. So. Either way, you know, I can plug in 2 pi, my radius is 20, drdt was 50. So 2 times pi times 20 times 50 is a number. So what is that? 2, that's 100, so 2,000, 2,000 pi. So dadt is 2,000 pi. Now, since it's area, area is going to be feet cubed per minute. All right. All right. Why did I write? No, no, no. Cubed, 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 squared, feet squared per minute. I'm curious about um, 6,200 square feet per minute. You might remember the BP oil spill from about 10 years ago. Uh, but you guys were little then. Never mind. <laughs> That's a lot. It's a lot of oil. Um, and that's just the rate that the area is changing then. If we, if we show what happens when the radius is 50, 
All the numbers stay the same except for radius was now 50. If we do that one, 2 times 50 times, it's what is that, 5,000? Yeah. 5,000 pi feet squared per minute. This is getting out of hand pretty fast. So, in general, you want to kind of define things. And I like how, how Stu does it in his notes. He, he writes down what's constant and what's changing. Things that are changing, they have a, a derivative that isn't zero that we're going to have to pay attention to. And we'll, we'll talk more about that as we see examples like that. Um, so if you look through at our future examples, you'll notice that related rates goes on for, oh, I don't know, 12 more pages. We've scratched the surface here. Um, and I'll continue on in the next video. I uh, hope this was helpful. Bye.